Healing is a big thing for a lot of people, and I think, I think probably everybody in the planet, at some point in their life, has to go through it. It's part of our growth, right? Um, no pain, no gain. I guess is, is, is the old saying. Uh, for me, I've had a pretty disruptive journey. Um, not as bad as some, but again, it's it's our perspective on things. And for me, it was it's relative. Uh, I had a very painful upbringing. I didn't get a lot of stimulation. I was always behind. Uh, you know, things uh, that I had to deal with in school. You know, I got sick once, which kept me out of school for six months. And then I was in an accident when I got later in life, which kept me out of school for six months. So I was always behind, always felt socially inept, and was always picked on and always felt like I didn't belong. And, uh, and one fine summer day when I got sick from drinking some tainted water and had to stay home, uh, my mother got me a guitar. And uh, that began my whole journey into healing that I, you know, I didn't science out, I didn't approach the instrument with thinking I would be healed. But just sitting there and, and feeling like I'm part of something was a healing process for me. Yeah, so uh, my name is Don Alder. I'm from Vancouver, BC, Canada. Um, and I'm here today to kind of share some of my thoughts uh, that maybe resonate with you. We all have our own personal journeys. But when I, you know, to start off, when I start thinking about things like being lonely or loneliness, um, well, they have quite a bit different meaning to me. Um, for me, being alone is actually not such a big problem because that's how I kind of grew up. I was by myself. Um, you know, I, my mother, my father died when I was quite young, at about age four. And uh, my mother only had great sex education and she had to try to take care of me in Montreal. So like normal children, I didn't get a lot of stimulation. And that's nothing against my parents. We just were very poor at the time. But that isolates you a bit. And I know that when I got to school, that I was a bit socially inept because I didn't have the usual, you know, tools, communication tools like other kids did. Being alone for me over my years and period of development as a guitar player, uh, it's, I'm, I'm actually happy to be alone. My best moments are when I'm with my guitar, uh, trying to create something in the universe. Um, as for being lonely, I do feel that too. I mean, it's, uh, you know, being around people is very important. Um, it helps with your social development and it really helps you make you feel connected to the world. And while I've had some of the problems feeling connected to the world because of my, my earlier incidents, uh, I do understand that it's very important to be social. Humans are social creatures. And so I do love going out to settings where there's lots of people. I don't always interact, but I love observing, watching. And when you share thoughts with friends or not friends, you learn a lot of different things. Since I've been touring as an artist, uh, I get to meet a lot of fascinating people. And what I find staggering to me is that is that people come to my shows and they feel touched and they feel I have something special to offer. And when I get to talk and learn about them, we're talking to engineers that are developing carbon fiber wings for aircraft and skills that I could never even dream about having, but they're willing to interact with me. So uh, I get to learn a lot. So yeah, loneliness and being lonely, two different things, but, uh, but I love both and both need to be explored by, by every individual. We all have our own paths to cross and we each uh, deal with it differently. Home, home, home. So, uh, when I think what it's like to be where home is, uh, I mean, really, I, I remember listening to a Frank Zappa album, and one of the ladies uh, was traveling on a bus with him, and she said, home is where the heart is. And, and I think that does apply in my case, because I travel so much that you have to make home where the heart is. And no matter where you go, there's phenomenal people, phenomenal places to stay. Um, so yeah, home is where the heart is. But... Do I do love and get home to my own bed and sinking in and, you know, getting into some lazy habits? Absolutely. So I would sit with this guitar and I couldn't read or write music. We were too poor to do that. But um, I was able to kind of put colors on black and white notes and I would discover these cool little, you know, sounds and it made my heart bountiful. And whether I was creating something unique or not didn't matter to me. It was just me present in that moment where I felt like I was part of the universe. And that kind of kept developing, you know, then I kept getting these little musical gifts given to me and and uh, I would develop them and I ended up as a, you know, 
as a songwriter or a composer. Now, I've never considered myself as a true musician or a professional musician or a true composer, but I've always considered myself and have been proud of feeling as an artist. And, and as an artist, you get to break all the rules. And uh, that's what's allowed my heart to kind of heal and become a little bit fuller um, because I felt so isolated and playing with the instrument just gave me, made me feel special that I had something to offer. And I, I think that's my journey. I think everybody uh, goes to their own way of finding things. And uh, I'm sure some musicians will resonate with what I just said, but uh, we all have our challenges and we all find different wheels of healing. And I think that's important and nothing to be ashamed of uh, that makes your heart grow. And by healing, you end up learning more about loving and, uh, well, and being more compassionate to others as well. When I think about, you know, music and love and the relationship between the two, well, <laughs> there's the instrument version of love and then there's the human to human version of love. And, and I gotta say the instrument one is one that I'll always have in my heart, my, my deepest, the darkest moments. All my different very personal moments have, have been with a guitar. I've not fully done that with a human yet. Um, so the love with an instrument is complicated still. Uh, it's frustrating at times when you can't achieve what you want, but it's very simple. Human to human love is a very complicated thing. And, uh, and it, uh, you have to be willing to work at it. And I, I have not had the opportunity to do that yet, but my own relationship with, with music has been very, very deep love and it's, it's helped me to heal. So, and to be empathetic towards others and, uh, and a fuller feeling of life. Music has, has a lot to offer. You know, when it comes to music, um, I, I've always suggested to people that if they're gonna get involved with it and wanna do something with it, that you need to love what you're doing. Because if you're gonna continue with music, through, especially with guitar, it's very simple to learn three chords. It takes a lot of time and it's very consuming and very boring to get good at it. And the only way you progress through that is if you have love of what you're doing, otherwise you're just not gonna be interested in doing it. So then, you know, when I, when I think about what personally inspires me, as a musician, uh, it's different events, it's seeing different bands, it's little, all sorts of little triggers, uh, seeing a person smile in a certain way. And, and though I might not recognize it at the second, at that point in time when I'm trying to compose music, those little things that happen during the day usually always come back into the music in some shape or form. Um, but, uh, you know, as growing up, I listened to a lot of different styles of music. And, and when I hear my music come back, there's no question I can hear bits and pieces of, of songs that I, that I remember from the past. So I think inspiration comes from, from a lot of places, especially from ice cream. That really helps, too, uh, on a bad day. So, so when it comes to writing music, you know, it, you, there's a lot of different approaches. You can sit there and just try to science it out. Or you can do what I do. It's like a little kid banging on a piano at 8 o'clock in the morning, driving everybody crazy, waiting for three little notes to come together that makes you go, wow, where did this come from? And then you kind of build it into a song. And so in that process of going forward, you know, you're, you're exploring, you're making mistakes with all sorts of things, and you're working on colors to make it kind of express itself. And then you kind of try to think, well, you know, where did all this come from? Um, so I, I a few thoughts on that. One is just messing around. You get like a little kind of cartoon music idea and you can develop it. But I think, you know, you know, you you're also drawing on from 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 things in the past. So for example, I'll be playing along and another little lick will pop in and I realize, oh, that must that sounds like something I did with the Bruce Coburn thing or a Led Zeppelin thing or something I did in the past. So I think a lot of your past influences and experiences uh, start to come into play when you're writing something and you're doing it freely from the heart. If you're doing it on paper, it's a whole different process. So you can sit down there and write a whole song on paper and play it note to note. And to me, that's playing a song. But um, when you're creating from just pure desire and inspiration from your being present in the moment, I think that's when you start coming up with some, some very cool things. But that's just my personal journey and my thought on it. I'm sure there's a lot of different ways to do it. So.
you know, when I grew up, I had to go through a lot of healing. And to current day, I'm still healing. And, and music has been a big part of that for me. And, and learning how to, you know, be with good people and accept their help has also been a healing thing for me. But along that journey, I ended up sort of helping, well, not helping, but helping others with their healing without being scientific about it. It just became a natural thing. And I think why is because that when I was healing, you know, I learned about humiliation. I had to deal with, you know, not feeling part of the world and uh, and hurting. And, and I think that makes you empathetic and compassionate. Um, and then when you see others in that same situation where they're hurting, uh, you, you, you just want to help. That's a human thing to do, right? And I think when you've got all those things, you're a little bit more sensitive when you do see somebody hurting. So that's been a big part of my life. And the way I fell into it is that when I was a young guy in school, um, I met a name by the guy of Rick Hansen. And uh, this time in my life, I was just kind of starting to keep, kind of play more guitar to try to feel part of the world. But I got involved with sports to try to be like all the other boys, right? And it turned out I we was playing basketball. It was in junior high. And I was like the worst guy in the basketball team. And I met this guy, Rick Hansen, who wasn't the best, but uh, the player. But what happened is that the coach picked him to be uh, to be the, the team man or the team guy or what's the captain, the captain of the team. And so what I observed from Rick at that time. Now, this is me looking back, writing the story, not me knowing the story at the time, is that Rick would spend a lot of time with me, with my skills and uh, and. And I could never understand why, because the good players would always hang out with the good players and the not so good players were kind of ostracized or pushed off to the side. So I was this guy that was really good hanging out with me. <clears throat> and because he did that, we became really, really good friends. But when I look back, I kind of go, perhaps that was a sign of what leadership is. I don't know if he was empathetic or he just needed to, he needed to realize that you have to fix the weak link of your team to have a stronger team. So. Maybe that's what it is, maybe it wasn't. But this led to a powerful friendship because he didn't give up on me. So what happened is that he invited me to go on a fishing trip with him. And um, when we were coming back, we had a bit of a dispute with the, the main driver, so we decided to hitchhike. And uh, as we were coming back home, we were in the back of a pickup truck, and we were on gravel road, and the, the guy wasn't familiar with the roads, and one thing led to the next, with a trick pickup started fishtailing, and then started rolling, and now his he was like an old Ford pickup with a with a box in the back filled with furniture and stuff. And so as the truck started to flip, I was in the high side, so I rolled down a gully, the truck rolled after me and stopped, so I was lucky, but Rick was dropped on the inside, so he was dropped right in the ground and he ended up with uh, being with a broken back. So he was paralyzed. And uh, so then we went to the hospital real quick and they took him off to Vancouver and I stayed in Williams Lake and but we kept in touch. And then when he came back to Williams Lake, we resumed our friendship. But this time he was in a wheelchair as he was paralyzed for life, paralyzed from the waist down. And Rick was now going through a very tough time because he was an incredible athlete. And now he felt like he didn't belong to the world. So he and I were real close buds. And, uh, and that beginning of the process where, where he would fall down, I'd help him up. We'd go to a restaurant and people would try to order for me, for him just showed you how backwards we were back then. So seeing all these things play in his life and what he had to deal with, and then I looked back at my life and I went, God, I don't really have as hardly nearly the problems he does. So it really kind of was a, a boast, a boast, like a boast in the arm for being more empathetic and being observant of other people's situations. And so what happened is in, uh, we kept good friends and in 1985, he decided to go around the world in a wheelchair to make a difference in the lives of others by demonstrating that uh, removing barriers, people with disabilities could reach their full potential. And uh, this trip took two and a half years. He wheeled uh, 24,901.55 miles or 40,000 kilometers. We went through 34 countries, uh, raised $26 million, um, became a Canadian hero. But what it was, it was a catalyst for change around the world. And I, I don't think a lot of people know this. And all of a sudden, you had curbs cut for sidewalks now so people with their wheelchairs could go down. And there was incredible transformation that started to happen. But because I was on the road, I got to learn a lot about wheelchairs. And uh, 
which got me selected to be on the Canadian Paralympic team in 1996 and 2000 as the equipment technician. And so I ended up hanging around with a lot of people that were in wheelchairs. And, uh, and in my music life, I ran into two quadriplegics. Now, these are guys that had barely even moved their arms, and they were starting to try to start a music program. And uh, they had to find adaptive devices so they could learn how to play, right? And so I became part of the band Spinal Cord, and uh, we did a song called Mary, which was a video for on YouTube. And uh, so I was around a lot of different people with lots of types of different disabilities, and then ended up in a job that was selling wheelchairs. So daily I was exposed to people with problems 10 times the amount of what I would ever have to deal with. So it was very humbling and a, a good learning experience. But in, during that whole process, I was helping people fulfill their dreams without even recognizing it. And now that I have recognized it, you know, today I'm working with, you know, various, various nonprofits to, uh, you know, to empower kids through music, uh, you know, you know, uh, kids that are challenged or don't have access to, you know, instruments and stuff like that. We have a, you know, program in Vancouver called
but the most determined. So then I, I go, can I apply that to my life? Um, and why, why I'm bringing this up is because everybody's got their own journey. So this might apply to you or might not. But when I look about, am I determined? Well, mm, I don't think so. I'm probably more lazy than determined. But again, it was the love of creating that made me do that. It wasn't determination. It was just love of creating. And I ended up with a product of that. Um, was I the most talented? Obviously, obviously not. I'm not talented at all. I just just love playing. And then, then I look at you know some of the competitions I did, um, where I won. And should I have won? Well, these con these top three competitions were the three main ones on the planet, and they're subjective. So the good news is that while there was no finish line to cross, you had to win the opinions of all these different judges to be winning, right? And so. Could you science that out? I kind of go, well, if I used uh, one of Rick's models that he told me about when he was playing sport, was a thing called circles of excellence. And so uh, applied to my you know, genre, what would be the circles of excellence? Well, one circle would be being mentally prepared. The other would be being physically prepared. And the third would be in having your equipment 100% prepared. And you have to apply 100% discipline in all those three areas to work at being successful or winning, right? I wish I could have science this out by that time, but once again, it was all done from heart. So the end of the day, how this works, how this could look is that sometimes it can appear that when you've won, when you've actually lost. Or there's times when it can appear that you've lost when you've actually won. So for me, it's always been the journey of this and it takes longer. So all the competitions I won, I walked on the stage, only had this, and pushed it out, and won. And you know, it took me a long time to evaluate, like, I'm with all these other guys and they're better players. And I know they're better players because I sit and I talk with them before the competition. They can better techniques, they're smarter, they don't know it, they know their stuff, but I beat them. And uh, it took me a long time to realize why the judges might have picked me. And it got quite simple, actually. And it allowed me to feel better about, about, about winning these competitions. And again, I don't think I'm the best at anything. Um, I just love what I'm doing. And if, you know, if this can resonate with somebody or just make somebody feel better about the situation they're in, I, I hope, it, hope it reaches you. But it got down to me that where I could justify these wins by going, well, when I think of Willie Nelson, is he the best singer on the planet? And I go, nope but people love him and his character. It just gets down simply to that. Whatever I put out, the judges liked, and they liked it better than the virtuosic other players. So, uh, uh, you know, again, I, there's so many paths in this life and so many variations. And I think you just, for me, uh, it's just trying to find some way of, you know, not believing in yourself, because I've had a hard time believing in myself. It's just loving something and just kind of keep doing it. And uh, it might lead to nowhere, but it's definitely going to work with your heart in some sort of way. And, uh, and that's, you'd have to be, you have to love you for you, right? And I think that's part of the process of getting there is just finding something that does that. So. dinner tonight Stuck on this road Trying to make things right And still I roll on Down this long winding road Every mile and every day Every night and every way Still I down this crazy road Still all I find A place I can't call my own Still all I find now Is a long, lonely road After all these years
After all these years Well I can't understand why Every last place Seems like another mile Of wear and tear upon this face and still I roll on Down this long winding road Every mile and every day And every night And every way Still I roll on now A long lost down this crazy road Every mile I find A place I can't call my own All these